Hello, am I in? You are here, June. Welcome. Hi, Thank Jim. you. Thank you. Glad to see you guys. It's been a yeah. long time. You. It feels like <laughs> very long. <laughs> well, it has been very long. It has. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Yes. I hope everybody's doing well. Yes. We are. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, June, for starting us off. Uh, it's been a while. I mean, it's been since last spring, actually, that we've all, whoever has been on the webinars, we've all been here together. So welcome once again. And now we're into the autumn, uh, well and truly here in Vancouver. And today we're going to go over hormones. And specifically, we're going to look at supporting hormone balance in the body with coma therapy. Now, today, you know, not everybody here perhaps is familiar with coma therapy. So today what this presentation is about is a medical technology called coma therapy. And we'll get into what that's about, supporting the balance of hormones in the body through a system called the endocrine system. And of course, coma therapy does more than this in the body, but this is what we're gonna look at today. Now, who's this webinar for? Well, perhaps if you're interested in the topic of hormones or you might suspect that you have a hormone imbalance, you know someone who may, you may already know you do, or something related, this is gonna be a presentation that's for you. And shortly we'll show you a sampling of some common symptoms for men and women. So then you'll be able to look at that list as well um, and have a quick look at that. Yeah, and that'll give you a better idea. And also, we wanted to make clear in this webinar, this is an introductory webinar. So what we're going to do today, today is going to lay a foundation for our approach, as it says here on the slide, a very simple and balanced approach to support a very fine balancing, we're going to get into all of this, of a complex system. And I'm very confident you're going to find this a very different approach than you may be used to up to this point. So stick around. And my name is Garrett Murren, and I'm here today with my wife. Avril Murren. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. And we've been with Radiant Life Technologies over a decade now. I look after things in North America, and Avril works with me in that. And yeah, we have kind of make all that stuff possible in terms of support for practitioners and home users and people getting going with coma therapy and stuff like that. So without further ado, So right now we're just going to take a pause just to land here, whether it's the morning time for you and you've been busy getting ready or it's the evening time. We're just going to check in with our state of being. What is our state of being right now? How are we feeling? Um, have you registered your mood today? You know, what are you feeling in your body? Any anxiety? Are you tired, energized, happy? So just take a pause and, and check in and see if you can register what's going on for you. Okay. So thank you. Whatever our state of being, our bodies are listening and responding through our hormones. And now, you know, at the beginning I said, we're going to use some certain terms here and along the way we're going to explain them for people who may not be familiar. So we thought we'd start with the word hormone. What is this word? Where does it come from? So that we can start to get a feel for what this is really about. So when you look at the word hormone, the definition, and I'm just going to read it off the slide, an organic compound produced in animal bodies, which is us, to regulate activity and behavior. Now when we look at the etymology of the word, where it comes from is this Greek. It sets things in motion, impel, urge on, impulse. So you get a sense of what this word hormone is about. It's really about getting things going, setting things in motion, okay? And like I said, we'll get into more of this, but we just wanted to start here because this really sets the trajectory for the whole thing. So I'm just going to leave that there for one second so we can all get on the same page. <laughs> And uh, then we'll move on. So, like I said, this is the etymology of the word. And you can see here, it comes from the Greek and some other roots. And it really is about getting things in motion in the, bo in the body. 
Okay, and we said we were going to look at a list of some of the common symptoms. This is certainly not a comprehensive list. Um, there's a lot more that can go on, but even just this this sampling is a, gives you an idea of you know there can be there's a lot that can go on in the body in connection with the endocrine system and the hormones. And some of the things on the list are you know both men and women can experience them like trouble sleeping, um, allergies. Things like that. So, you know, you can just take a quick scan through that. Today, we're not going to be going into anything in particular on this list. We're looking at, at it like overall, and we're looking at a more fundamental level what's behind all of these um, issues as a whole. And the reason we come from the angle we do is because a lot of times, conventionally speaking, of course, if someone has an imbalance in their hormones, they'll go and get a diagnosis, and it could be a very long list with the charts and figures and, you know, hormone X is 300% up and hormone Y is 50% down. And in that situation, you get this word map on the right where it's very complex. So only a professional, someone well-versed in this can really work through it with you if you're experiencing it. So we want to take a little different approach than that today, not to exclude this, but again, we're going to go to this more fundamental level so we can get past the complexity to where it all emanates from. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay a foundation. We need to lay some pieces in place in order to, let's say, go on this journey. And that's what we'll do now. We'll lay some pieces in place. So where we're going to start is with the, the body is an effect or an expression, it's not the cause. So when there is a disease in the physical body, it's not, this is not where the cause is, it's not where the disease starts. In the foreword of our user guide, it does go through this and explains that in earlier times, people did use a different model of looking at disease. They didn't just look at the, the physical body, they were looking deeper than that and saying, well, disease actually starts psychologically first with the emotions and behavioral patterns. So this is really where we wanna look. And then if we don't become aware of it on this level, then it will start manifesting in the body because it's trying to actually get our attention. Something is trying to get our attention. Um, so the disease is an expression and an effort to help us tune into and uncover an, an actual gap in our knowledge. So it's there for us to learn about something, something new that we don't know about ourselves yet. Um, and in Health and Holism, which is a guidebook that's written by Tian Merez, who's the founder of Radiant Life Technologies, it does include a list of diseases and their causes in there at that deeper level, at that behavioral, emotional um, perception level. So if anybody's ever interested in that, you can use that guide for yourself for your own learning. Yeah, and also if you look at the picture here, you know, if if I poke my finger with the cactus barb or whatever you want to call it, I'm not going to be upset at my finger. I'm not going to look to my finger for the cause. Obviously, I took an action that caused something to happen in my finger. So that's the kind of logic we're, we're looking at here. And that's not for a blame way, that's just matter of factly. And when we talk about, you know, expression, then there's definitely some good expressions here with these <laughs> little babies. So these are tiny new people to the world, but they've definitely got a lot going on behind those, <laughs> behind those little bodies. So we are not human beings on a spiritual journey. We are spiritual beings on a human journey. And these babies can definitely um, express that. Yeah, there's obviously the intelligence inside that body exceeds the age of the physical age of the body. It's very evident from those pictures. Love that, those pictures. So the body reflects our state of being through our hormones. So what do we mean when we say this? So we were just talking about disease starting in the thoughts and emotions. Um, and then 
the endocrine system will actually pick up on these things and then it translates it into the physiology. So an example would be, um, so last summer we were out at our friend's land and she's got some land in the mountains and there are some bears that are around the area. So you're already, you know, pretty wide awake when you're out and about in the woods there and take some bear spray or something. So we were out on a walk one day and quite a ways from her, the main part of her property and no car or anything, just this bottle of bear spray with us. <laughs> and <clears throat> excuse me, when we're out there, I mean, I'm always kind of looking, there's lots of trees and bushes and everything. So I'm always looking and trying to see in between the trees, you know, is there anything there? And the, this one day out on the walk, we're walking up this little hill and, and all, all of a sudden I'm looking and Garrett's ahead of me a little ways. And I look and I, I look again and like, oh, that's a bear. Like, that's definitely a bear. <laughs> so in that situation, I mean, okay, here's this bear. And then right away there's fear. And my body is right away goes into this, it's wide awake. It's like, okay, what we got to do something here. And you know, that usually in that situation, you're gonna, it's fight or flight. So you're thinking, oh, I gotta run because there's fear here. But all my physiology, like the whole body's like ready to go and woo. -hoo. But it's interesting when it's a bear because then your thoughts are also saying, hey, I'm not actually supposed to turn and run away. I need to actually also at the same time somehow stay calm in this situation. <laughs> so you're just, backing away slowly and but all these things are going on all these thoughts and emotions and and it's all in your body and it's all connected with the endocrine system and the physiology so and then you can have a completely different experience as well again with the physiology and the thoughts and emotions say two people are want to be intimate with each other so this is a completely different experience in the body but again the thoughts and emotions they go in, you know, the endocrine system picks up on those and then it translates into the physiology and prepares the body for, for what it wants to do. So. Mm. And when I was at the top of the hill and Avril said, that's beer. I mean, I could feel as soon as I had that information, I felt my physiology change very rapidly from, you know, relaxed, beautiful day in the mountains to so this is what we mean by it translates the thoughts and emotions into the physiology. And now let's unpack what we mean by thoughts and emotions, because there's a few nuances we want to explain here. And again, this is to lay the premise for why we take the approach we do. So now I'm going to play the DJ in this situation, or I'm going to try to. You're listening to Internal Monologue FM with me, DJ Subconscious, playing all of your thoughts nonstop uninterrupted 24 hours a day from classics like why did i say that to golden oldies like am i a horrible person to today's hottest hits what the hell am i doing with my life and am i hungry or am i bored so stay tuned so you'll see here <laughs> i mean we wanted to put this up as quite humorous from our perspective in the sense that not only are there conscious thoughts that we're aware of, but there are subconscious thoughts and things that are ju we're just conscious of. You know, like I'm conscious of the shirt that's on my back when I focus on it, but I'm not thinking about it all the time. Yet I can become conscious of it. So there's a range of thoughts, ones I'm fully aware of, ones I'm semi-aware of, sometimes aware of, and ones I'm not aware of that are playing. That's happening for everyone. And the subconscious is actually a lot larger than the conscious thoughts, we'll say. And of course, you know, when we look at that in terms of, well, you shared that experience you, you were going to share. Oh, with the not being able to sleep? With the sleep, yeah, that's actually good. Yeah, so sometimes I will have trouble sleeping. And I'm actually trying to see my thoughts, but I don't always see them. I just, I know that because I'm trying to think, is there something that's what is keeping me awake? Because I want to sleep right now. I feel I thought I was relaxed, um, but there's something going on there. I can tell because my it's something's busy 
my mind feels busy and my physiology is matching that where it's there's this amped up feeling and if i stay relaxed and take deep take deep breaths and just you know tell myself okay relax relax we're going to go to sleep now then you know this can start changing the physiology and help me to sleep or at least stay relaxed so that it's not this amped up feeling but then other what there's been other times where i would get really upset that i can't sleep so then the thoughts are kind of you know i'm feeling sorry for myself and oh this this is terrible and so then this has a different Physi this happens different in my physiology where it actually amps me up more and keeps me awake even longer. Like my, you can, I can feel my heart pounding, even getting sweats or something. So yeah, it can go in two different ways, mm. but it's all from this, you know, there is subconscious going on, but then, then it moves into conscious thoughts as well. Cause then I can see, Oh, what am I telling myself here right now? Mm. So. Thank you. That's really good. Yeah. And of course, you know, we all want to be in this happy place, but with this subconscious and conscious and different things that happen, sometimes we'll find ourselves in this fearful or angry or sad place. Not that we shouldn't experience the other emotions, but there's an influence with this subconscious that happens. So this is what we're talking about with thoughts and emotions. And we want to take that one step further to talk about it in terms of the symptoms of the thoughts and emotions we're having in our, let's say, our psychology, and that relates to our behaviors. Now, our behaviors are stemming from these thoughts and emotions, and if we go down to a really fundamental level here, drill down, you know, this is really graphic, obviously, in terms of this word map of very negative words, because of course we can have positive thoughts and emotions too, but when we get into these behaviors where we're talking about reactionary, where you know you heard the expression, someone pushed my buttons, and then I found myself reacting, and it was kind of out of nowhere. We have all of these experiences in our lives that are kind of fragmented and decoherent, and not really fitting into a coherent whole. And these will surface in our lives. I mean, it's inevitable. And, you know, all of a sudden I could be engaged, embroiled in an argument. I'm arguing with the signpost because my buttons are pushed and I just, I can't help myself but argue. So these are behaviors, symptoms of those thoughts and emotions. And when you look at this COVID and everything that's happening with the lockdowns and stuff, you know, the things that are happening because of this, domestic violence is skyrocketing right now. So this is an example of symptoms of the thoughts and emotions that are surfacing for people. And a lot, you know, there's uh, alcohol abuse. People are self-medicating in different ways. People are isolating. And, you know, there's lots of different ways to cope. Some people perhaps are eating in order to, you know, soothe themselves. So there's a lot of different behaviors we can display. And this is what we meant earlier in the, it starts in the psychology, in the thoughts and emotions, and then eventually, because our physiology is matching it, it can start to translate into the body. Now, that being said, this is where we want to come in with coma therapy. So how is coma therapy working? So it starts with us wanting to help the body to heal itself. So... Here we are, we put ourselves in the picture. So in order to start using coma therapy, it already starts, you know, it already takes a different mindset to get into this place where you want to use it. So it's a decision and saying, hey, you know, I think I don't want to feel this way anymore. And I know stuff's going on for me. So what can I do about it? So it's like a can do attitude and, and wanting something different because whatever is going on isn't working. So these thoughts and emotions that start coming up with even wanting to use it is where we start. And here's the, so Denisa there is, show, is holding the Comer Delta device, treating herself. This is a cross section of the medical terminal for the Delta. So, you know, first of all, it's us making this decision and then when we put coma therapy on the body, it's coherent multi-radiance therapy. So that coherence, 
that's in that's coming through the therapy into our bodies is a very it's like a very pure emotion very balanced emotion balanced thoughts so the, the messages that are coming through we're bringing coherence so this is helping us as well um, moving through you know usually we talk about chromotherapy in terms of biochemistry and biophysics but now we can look at it because we laid this foundation we can look at it in terms of very coherent thoughts so imagine we're thinking very coherent thoughts. We all know the experience of it affecting our physiology in a very positive way and very balanced emotions. Again, a positive effect on our physiology. And so we can look at cobra in that respect too. Did you see it starting now? What is okay. that? Yeah. yeah. So simply, we are the conductor of our health. Um, and I love this vote with your feet. So voting with our feet is, it's about choosing what we want to support, choosing what we want to do. Do we want something that's uplifting or are we going to choose something that's more destructive? So again, with coma therapy, it's this, when we're choosing to use coma therapy, the mindset is, I want to do something for myself. I want to uplift myself. And whether this is on our own or with a practitioner, but it's still, we know that it's something very positive for our bodies, for our lives. Because when we take responsibility and say, hey, I want to do this. I don't want to keep handing my power over to somebody else. It's very powerful. Um, it, it makes a difference for ourselves and others around us as well. Mm. So it's empowering all around. And to make a distinction, Avril is not referring to, you're not referring to working with a practitioner. We're referring to this, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in Canada, a lot of people, and we're going to generalize here, we have free health care. So why would I worry about my health? I don't have to think about it. So in other words, this is our power handed over to someone else mm -hmm. to look after it for us. So just to set the distinction, is we, we want to work together and have support. I mean, we're human beings. We need that. So, yeah, I just wanted to. That's, yeah, that's yeah. great. Thank you. And now we want to take a little bit different approach, look at the same thing. We're just going to shift the focus to a little different angle here. When we talk about our body reflecting our state of being through our hormones, if you look at thoughts and emotions, we all have the experience of when we feel very good, our energy levels in our body are automatically higher. We feel more energy. We feel more alert, more aware, more capable, more able. In, in every way, it has an effect. So that also, and we've got, if you look at this screen, this slide here, think of this as a cascade effect, okay? So thoughts, emotions are at the top of the cascade, affect energy, affect function, and affect structure. So when we talked earlier about starts in the physiology and it'll eventually show up or sorry, it starts in the psychology and eventually will show up in the physiology. Here, if you think about it in terms of this cascade, this is how it affects. So very uplifting, positive thoughts. You know, let's say we're in love for the brand new relationship. Our energy is very high. Our body actually starts to function in a much better way at that point compared to if we're feeling low. And this influences how the body builds structures. And by structures, I mean puts cells together, builds the cells, what's inside the cells, builds tissues, builds systems. All of the structures in the body work more coherently. The same thing happens again when we use coma therapy. Increase the efficiency of energy production in the body, which thereby means functioning at a higher level, a more coherent way of function, which in turn means the body can create better, more coherent structures, which means we feel healthier. And of course, there's a feedback loop here as well, but we'll get into that in a second. Because uh, when we look at endocrine disorders, now we're using this word, endocrine is simply where the hormones come from for now, okay? When we look at an endocrine disorder, what we're looking at is if you look at how the system functions, it's a balance, rebalance, balance, rebalance, continuously balance and rebalance to maintain a center. 
whatever that center is. You know, we had the example that one you gave earlier with the bear uh, in the woods. So I need an appropriate balance to be able to, as you said, we can't just run away here in, in like on, on autopilot. <laughs> we need to be aware of our state of being and, you know, that we have to walk away from the bear. So we, we have to be conscious in that point. So we need a physiology. If we get into a space where we can't maintain that balance, this is where things start to happen. So let's say, for example, we're in this situation. Everybody's in this situation. So with that, there's a lot of stress, okay? So now we're in this place of having to maintain a balance. The physiology needs to match the perception of I'm stressed out, this is dangerous. I don't, I'm not saying I personally see it that way. I'm just generalizing about uh, how the media is portraying this, we'll say. This is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. So cortisol, this hormone cortisol is being pumped, pumped, pumped. What happens is, to go back to the example, I'm actually going to use my pen here on the screen. This might help. Pen. So we're in this COVID state and people are afraid, afraid, afraid. So they keep producing a predominant set of hormones, okay? Usually, if we take the bear example, situation passed, I stop producing that certain set of hormones to match the situation. And then I spent my yeah. Once the bear, once we saw the bear wasn't following us. <laughs> yes, exactly. Once we saw the bear wasn't following well, us, we were making sure for quite a while. Then we went into my my adrenal glands and things could go into recovery mode. And after that, maintenance. But if we stay in this cortisol pumping, 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 what happens is we impede the ability of the body to recover. Now that gland can't recover. Also we impede the ability of the gland to maintain itself. So what happens is regeneration is going down. Of course, this means increased aging and we start to develop those hormone imbalance symptoms we looked at earlier, because if you think about it, it's like a repetitive strain injury. But over time, if it happens again and again and again, we get a repetitive strain injury where we, it's now we can't function properly. The same thing with a gland. If it has to operate the same way over and over and over without a chance to regenerate, without a chance to have a dynamic balance of changing states, then it gets exhausted and can't keep up. And then people are, well, why do I have this brain fog? Or, you know, and if you think about that in terms of someone goes to sleep, they wake up in the morning, they just can't get out of bed. Now, the fact that they're so exhausted makes them start having negative thoughts and emotions about themselves, and it exacerbates the whole situation. So again, this is why we take the approach we do with Comra. And I'll just, Avril, if you want to go into this slide. Great. Yeah. yeah. So how do we approach treatment with all these types of endocrine disorders? So on the left here, so we have a picture of the, where the endocrine glands are in the body. And we have an example over here. This is an ex this is our universal five treatment in our user guide. So we've called this here the hormone treatment, but because it is actually addressing some of them directly, and then the support points are, are just that's what they're doing. They're supporting the overall treatment. So with any hormonal imbalance going on, this is an excellent treatment um, to work with. So yeah, this is a systemic treatment. So yeah, we're hitting, you know, the pituitary and pineal gland are gonna get treated right there. And the adrenals here are one of the very important ones um, to get treated. And then also universal three, which we don't have pictured here, but universal three is our blood treatment. And this is a very important treatment for pretty much everything in the body, but with the hormones, it's so beneficial because the hormones are circulating through the blood. Would you want to say anything additional with this? Well, one thing I just wanted to add here as well, you know, so now we've explained a hormone, we've given you an idea about the gland, and this is just a picture so you know where they are in the body. It's always helpful when doing treatments with coma therapy to not just put it on your skin, but think about, well, what am I treating here? And then we're going to show, we're showing one of our local treatments here. So this is one of the gynecology treatments. Again, this is in the user guide. 
And I think I said it last slide, but again, anytime we're doing local, the systemic is going to, we want to do both together. It's hugely important and it's, yeah, the benefit is unbelievable. It makes such a huge difference. So with this gynecology example treatment, you can see all the things that can be addressed through working with this, um, just this treatment alone. And if you're, you know, just practically speaking in somebody's day, say a woman has menstrual cramps. So she could do maybe two or three treatments throughout the day of this local treatment, just to work with those symptoms of the cramping in that area. And then at one point in the day, she could do the universal five just to get her the whole system balanced. It's really excellent. And another treatment that we have listed there is the, the liver treatment, which is gonna support liver detox. And again, this is important because the hormones are you know, recycling through the liver. The liver's got lots of different jobs in the body. So any support that we can give the liver is gonna benefit the whole body really. And for anyone not familiar, with Comra therapy, these treatments are in our user guide, which you can download or look at on our website. And then also, these are just treatment examples. There's much more in the user guide. And, you know, we, you see this list there. Remember we said earlier, okay, we have this huge list of symptoms, which isn't comprehensive or exhaustive. It's just a, a sum. We're addressing these at a more fundamental level. And this is clearly demonstrated here in this treatment because you can see we started to tick off the things that are beginning to be addressed with the local treatment as well as the systemic treatment, which are gonna address even more that are on that list without uh, maybe direct mention of them on the previous slide, but we're addressing a lot of things. And again, like Errol said, you don't have to wait. You can be proactive with coma therapy when something comes up or think it's gonna come up. Yeah. And also, you. please go ahead. Also, the Comra is a bridge with the thoughts and emotions because those thoughts and emotions, they're not going to be resolved overnight. You know, we can, we've been, these things have been developing since our childhood. So, Comra therapy is there to support us while we work through those deeper issues if we choose to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as we're nearing the end of the presentation here, we just want to touch on a couple other aspects that can affect the balance of the hormones. So some medications can affect the hormones. Um, I mean, the birth control pill is one of those as an example. So lots of women end up going on the birth control pill, not only for birth control, but also for skin issues, mood issues, cramps, like to help their menstrual cramps when they have their cycle. Um, but it does so it does help those things but it's not actually balancing anything <clears throat> because when a woman tries getting off of that it's just there's just habit going on in her body and she's just a, like a mess emotional mess you know moody different things going on in her body so it's not not an easy thing to come off of and just so, to mention one point on that if you think about a medication that does the job of an endocrine gland for a while what happens is it kind of goes to sleep, doesn't have to do the work anymore. So then when we want to stop that, then all of a sudden the gland's got to learn how to do things. So just I just wanted to mention that because when you think of the treatments we listed previously, I hadn't mentioned it, but endocrine disorders, hormone imbalances, the, let's say the more entrenched they are, the long, they're not quick fixes. It's not like, you know, if you bruised your elbow or something like that, that's a pretty quick fix. So be prepared there is an investment in yourself with that so i just wanted to put that in. Okay, thank you. and the next aspect we're looking at is environmental factors specifically things that are called endocrine disrupting chemicals or edcs so these are ubiquitous in our environment they're chemical contaminants and toxins and they are direct insults to our hormonal balance so, I mean, just think about this, is that there's thousands and thousands of toxins and chemicals out there, and they actually created a category of chemicals that are called endocrine disrupting chemicals. So it's not like it's even unknown that they're having an effect here. It's very clear they have their own category. So this is quite something. So they're found and again, they're ubiquitous. So air, soil, water, it's in our food, 
any, you know, any foods that are sprayed with chemicals, cosmetics, personal care products. And this includes for ladies, the menstrual protection products that we're using right next to our body, um, household products, cleaners, laundry supplies, plastics. So they're kind of everywhere. And even if, you know, we want to work to reduce these things in our environment as much as possible, but no matter what we do in our homes, in our own lives, they're still, they're just, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's not really any escape. So, you know, let's work to reduce these and then they're reducing the insult to the body. But again, coma therapy is there even before they start, these things start having an effect on the physiology through the, through, you know, mimicking the hormones, blocking the hormones, interfering in some way they just they cause havoc as well just like that that's like the birth control pill can mm. and if you think about this, this <laughs> slide we had up with the balance and rebalance they're always adding weight to one side of that scale to pull it off balance so coma therapy we're, we we want to we're encouraging people to use it to mitigate that effect because remember this starts to lead to that the, the, the gland doesn't get a rest it doesn't get to if you think about life in the sense of it's this changing dynamic balance, it's not a static balance. It's always in flux and change. When we get into a chronic illness, it gets locked into one spot and then the associated systems and glands and cells and tissues get exhausted. So we can use karma therapy to mitigate those effects and not only internally with our thoughts and emotions, as you said earlier, as a bridge that way, but also as a bridge between us and our environment to help mitigate the effects in that way as well. So again, we're just gonna acknowledge here the, the vote with your feet. You know, what are the choices that we're making? What am I choosing to support and nurture in my life? What am I choosing for myself to support myself, nurture myself, uh, my health and well being? So we're the conductors. Um, of our own healing. And again, we can get support from other people. It's not about going it alone or anything like that. It's just we're, we're in the center. We're the ones in charge and, and making those choices. And we need, it's, it's very important to acknowledge ourselves for that as well when we do make those choices that, hey, you know, I'm, I actually got myself to this place where I can make this choice for myself that's uplifting me. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, it's very powerful to be taking responsibility and putting ourselves in the picture. Mm. And just so you don't miss the point that I was bringing, anybody who's using coma therapy right now, please give yourself the credit that you do care about yourself and you are giving yourself that TLC, we'll say. It's not a small thing because it talks about, it really points to the mindset that Avril brought up earlier about, hey, I want to step in here. Hey, I want to take charge of my life. Hey, I want to look after myself. Hey, I want to look after my family. That's not to be taken for granted is what we're trying to say. Yeah. So with that, we come full circle to these common symptoms uh, of hormonal imbalances. And we talked about a more fundamental level to start to address all these without talking about them specifically, because this usual way people would go about this, and why I said I feel this is a very unique way that many, maybe you've never heard of before, or maybe you have, and it's a refresher. But a lot of times with a diagnosis with a hormonal imbalance, it'll be about, well, we need to move this hormone down and this one up. Oh, we need to adjust this one and that one. So it's all about trying to do this job manually, which, okay, skilled practitioners can do. But really it's the body at the end of the day with the skills to manage this because it's always managing it. So let's rather than try to make all of these adjustments manually, let's go to a more fundamental level and support the body to do what it knows how to do best. And that is match our, physio match our physiology to our state of being and then thereby start to resolve those imbalances. And through coma therapy, we can best support the body in doing what it knows how to do best, and that is to balance the hormones, because that's what it's always doing. So then it comes back to that pricked finger with the cactus. So if there's something going on 
with I'm feeling burnt out, then it's, you know, instead of going, okay, one pill for a burnout, a different pill for decreased mental clarity, another one for decreased sex drive, instead of a pill for an ill, now we take a more holistic approach. So holism is another word for coherence, which is what coma therapy is all about, coherent multiradiances. And this is an approach people take in their lives. Whether you use coma or not, there is a coherent approach we can take in our lives. And this is what we're pointing to. So we're going to stop there. And now we'll open it up for questions and maybe if have anybody some has anything to share about their own experiences at all or any questions related to this topic today. I don't know if it's timing and frequency for those treatments, maybe this could like the uni five or something. Um, I'd have to get. The... Okay. Well, I mean, we can go over it, but they're in the book. But what you're looking at doing is you're basically addressing the fight flight in the body versus rest and digest. So the treatment points are clearly laid out in the book and the times on the skull, uh, treating the, the brain and the glands in the brain are gonna be at 50 Hertz. Around the heart is always gonna be at five Hertz. And then the adrenal glands are gonna be five and 50 Hertz. As for the time, you know, adrenal glands are like two minutes at five, two minutes at 50. I think it's close to 20 minutes total, isn't it? Yeah, it's Three 20, minutes? about 22 minutes yeah. total the treatment is. So it's really clear in the book. If you're not familiar with Comra, if you go to our website and go to our knowledge center, then you can look at the user guide. You can download it for free. It doesn't, you know, you don't have to sign up for anything to do it. And you can look through and it's the universal five treatment in the universal section of the user guide. And the blood, for example, that's all at five, um, five Hertz for the frequency and it's one minute per point. So it's a 10 minute treatment, just as an example. And then, I mean, even something like if I, if somebody has menstrual cramps, for example, you could do the whole treatment if you wanted to, I can't remember how long the whole treatment is for that local treatment, but you could even, you know, if you have five minutes, then you, you don't even worry about the user guide. You just choose your frequency. And this can change. Um, it can be five, I mean, even a thousand. I've heard people using a thousand hertz even on menstrual cramps. And this is part of, you know, taking these steps on our own, um, looking after our own health. And we start learning, well, what works for my body right now? Um, so even a thousand, if the cramps are really bad are actually more soothing than say a five hertz. But that's, you know, after you get to know the, the therapy a little bit, you can start tuning into that type of thing. But you could just spend, hey, I've only got five minutes, so I'm gonna do this right here and right now, treat myself on just two or three points here in the area, and then carry on. Hmm. And just to further what you just said, when you look at the user guide, we're giving you a conservative middle of the road starting point to start to address things in the body. Also, we say in there, we say, we encourage you to use your intuition and experience. And because coma is inherently safe, you can experiment. You can start, let's say, coloring outside the lines while you explore, because I will just gave you example. One lady with menstrual cramps, 50 Hertz is what she finds most effective. Another person will be a thousand Hertz if, you know, because it's it's the least penetrating of the frequencies. So there is room to explore here. And when it comes to your own health, well, you're the one who can best determine what's working best for you. And it's gonna be a process of just learning to trust ourselves. And that is another, let's say, surreptitious thing that can occur for people when they use coma therapy. It starts to build trust in our own self and our own, hey, I feel this way, I don't feel that way. And we start to tune in a little more. So I hope that acknowledges your question, Tatiana. Uh, Maxim, we have the chat up here so we can see, I don't know if anybody sent anything to you privately, but we see one about the vagus nerve. There's also one about um, anxiety and stress and mm. that would be the doing the same thing really. So Uni5 is gonna be, uh, with respect to uh, Claudia's 
question anxiety and stress. And then also, is there a way, like an application to improve the health function of the vagus nerve? Yes, and we'll get to that one next. Oh, okay. Because we'll the then, stress right? relates to the uni5 as well. Okay. This would be the starting point that we'd recommend for stress because you're going to treat your adrenal glands in that treatment. And the adrenal glands are probably, for a lot of people, especially now in the environment everyone's in, are really taxed. So you can treat your adrenals, and Uni5 is a very good starting point. Now, if you want to continue on, then let's put it this way. The most comprehensive type of treatment in the book is an autoimmune treatment, because there you start addressing the nervous system, the endocrine system, and metabolism in general. If you look at the universal treatments, they're kind of they're they're a more simple approach to this. So it depends on what is going on. For general stress and anxiety, Uni5, but if someone has a lot of things going on and they need to address a lot of things going on in their body, as well as their thoughts and emotions and environment and all this, and they really wanted to take the time, you can go much more comprehensive. Now, you're going to want to break treatments down depending on your schedule, as Avril mentioned, and then also your body's schedule, because healing takes time, you know, so it's not if this much is good, more must be better, and we want to hammer this out. When we get into chronic illness, we have to understand that it takes cycles of treatment and pause and treatment and pause while the body regains its own natural balance. And this ties into the question, too, with respect to the vagus nerve. So Uni5, again, when you look at the treatment points, you're treating right here at the top of the sternum. You're treating the thymus gland, treating the heart, the heart. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the mirror image. So uh, anyway, uh, when you're treating that pathway, you're also treating that vagus nerve pathway. So this is implicated in the Uni5 treatment. 